All right. So I just want to make sure everything's ready for the brooder to get the chicks. One of the main things that's important to keep in mind is you want a warm space. So we turn these two lights on ahead of time just to kind of warm up the area. As you can see, it's kind of messy in here. So I am going to sweep a little bit. So if you guys think about it, we do have quite a few birds coming into this brooder. I mean, we were, we're on our fourth batch of 100. And I do think it's important to keep it tidy and dusted uh, just because of how warm it gets in there too during the summer days. You can see kind of, I don't know if you can see it on camera, but just from sweeping there's dust particles coming out. I feel like Cornish Cross are more susceptible for respiratory issues and sneezing and sometimes we can even dip into the high 40s low 50s at night so going from those drastic temperatures naturally something will happen so just keeping the air a little bit cleaner is something that i find um, gives them a better chance and it helps my ocd <laughs> Oh, you can go on that side. Can Careful. I help? I want to get them out too. Oops. Careful. There's your water. Hi oh. guys. There's your water. So we only did have two that didn't make it, um, usually just with transfer and them being in just a confined area, some of the weaker ones do get trampled, so that does happen. I do also want to mention that we put preventatively um, apple cider vinegar in our water. Also with the stress of travel, chickens or baby chicks can develop what's called pasty butt. Uh, where their um, poop just hardens outside their butt and they're unable to clear that track. So that makes sure everything uh, transitions smoothly. We also continuously check for weaker ones, ones that are smaller that perhaps haven't made it to water or don't know where their food is. In the next few hours, if not the first day or two that we do get our birds or chicks, we bring them to the water, we show them, and continually try to help them get better if that happens. All right, so these guys will be getting processed in a few days. With them, we will have a total of almost 300 meat chickens at once. And I think developing a system from the brooder to our little corral here to out to pasture has really helped us maintain the number of batches. We're already looking at how can we add more. <laughs> 
So I also just wanted to go over how we do our batches. I think Kevin uh, t touched on this relatively a little bit in one of the videos that we posted before. But when we get the baby chicks, we put them on the left side of the brooder, which is, I don't know, a 10 by 3, 10 foot long by 3 foot wide little rectangle until they're about two weeks old. When they're two weeks old, we bump them over to the other side, which gives them access to outdoors. We don't open that door, I would say, until the three week mark. This batch here behind me that you just, or in front of me that you just saw, we actually let them outside in their second week of, or right just after their second week of life and they were already scratching and looking for bugs and all the good things so the earlier we can kind of get them out the better that's going to get easier with the weather getting warmer and then so at the point where they're about four weeks old we move them over to one of the pastures we created the pasture that our second batch of broilers is in right now the this third batch will go on that one more time it's just not ready out back yet we want it to grow we want to give the clover and the buckwheat and the grass seed that we planted a fighting chance of actually lasting or you know and being more fruitful for the chickens we want them eating all of that stuff so i think just waiting an additional four weeks and letting that really thicken will give us a better shot so we'll do that um so the first batch of chickens that will be on the new pasture out back is the baby chicks that you just saw. I know it's hard to follow with the batches and, and all of that stuff, but we'll try to explain things the best we can. But what is ultimately important is just the age of the chicken, when you're introducing it outside, when it's strong enough, that sort of thing. So I just wanted to let you know. I do need to find a spot for my herbs today. This is parsley and basil. I grew and harvested out of this small little box all winter long. <laughs> and now I'm gonna put it outside somewhere and it will really expand. So the cucumber beetles are testing my patience here. So as you can see, we have quite a few cucumbers growing. Let me just show you them. Okay, oh, sorry about that. If you've never seen a cucumber beetle. So at this point, I just get them and I squish them. Yuck. You guys have probably gathered by now we've still had to significantly water our tunnel by hand oh my gosh look at this guy you're lucky Kevin's not out here I think I think our hardest lesson that we have learned so far already is buying good compost and I think that's part of the irrigation issue honestly the compost that we bought just wasn't broken down as much as it should have it's made up of docky manure and wood chips but we put it in the tunnel and we were finding that it wasn't even retaining the water it was just drying so quickly as well as you know the the heat we've gotten already this year which is you know different for me but all in the same it wasn't it was getting water it was just going right through so I've had to amend these beds several times as you guys saw with the green beans specifically but even more so on top of that we got an Alaskan fish fertilizer that we've been putting through here as well as adding just some topsoil to give this the you know the mediums just more substance so we've really struggled with with the watering and then this problem of it, you know, the compost not even being adequate enough to, to grow much. 
I think we saw um, a lot of yellowing in the beginning because of the, the plants just fighting for nutrients. You know, we did our research, spaced everything out appropriately as far as root space goes. But we couldn't figure out why. And then, I, you know, I just started thinking and I just had this gut feeling as well that the compost wasn't great. And another reason why you should always just, you know, heed your intuition. But anyways things are starting to grow now and I'm just super grateful for that and to me the lesson in that is just like not giving up you know no matter how hard it is what can you do to make it better that sort of thing so we've come a long way everything's looking really well like we had mentioned before our first market is in less than a week and a half today's Friday it's next Sunday so we have a ton of flowering on our beans we're hoping that we get some more beans but these cucumber beetles, you know, the insects as well as the bad compost, does everything working, uh, you know, to, to really test us, but we really want this, so we're going to work really hard for it, and I think it's important that you guys know that if there's something that you want, you know, bad enough, you can get it too. <laughs> Alright guys, they is cucumber beetle extinction time. They are relentless. So, like I mentioned earlier, there just aren't a lot of options as far as when you're organic gardening and dealing with cucumber beetles. Um, I've researched a couple things. One of them is to buy yellow sticky tape. I'm half on the fence about that only because I don't want any other insects to get beneficial insects to get stuck on there. Another thing that we had found um, to try is vacuuming them up. So we're going to try that. I'm going to get the shop back. We'll see how, how many we get. It's going to be disgusting. And another thing I did read about, obviously, is crop rotation. So we won't be putting cucumbers here again next year. They do bed in the soil, I read as well. They're everywhere. They're starting, you know, to damage the cucumbers. And they can, like, decimate a garden if you if you don't take care of them and I have such beautiful cucumber plants I just don't want that happening as you can see here oh there's a ton on here look at them oh my gosh okay what are you doing in there Dee? wash wash never been more excited for anything in my life <laughs> just kidding but this is pretty exciting I think it's gonna be more satisfying than anything hi Judy you want to help me get the beetles yeah. no okay all right let's see if you can actually if I can actually get them being sucked up here. <gasps>
Good morning, guys. It has actually been a week since the battle with the cucumber beetles, uh, since I was vacuuming anyway. I'm currently in the lead in this fight, even seven days later, it's still going on. We have gotten a number of cucumbers though, so I think I'm doing a good job. I still come out here and, you know, there's two on one plant, one here, one there. So I'm keeping up with it. I think that's the key. I did not try the sticky tape. I just did uh, the vacuum one time. I got a majority of them, but they do bed down. They do flip over. They have good ways of hiding. So you know it's hard to get them all but i am staying on top of that fight right now <laughs> however the uh, japanese beetles have started to come out i haven't seen too many of those uh, all i do is put them over uh, just like knock them off into a jar of dish soap and water i have probably eight already and that's not bad to me but we have since had our first market i know at the start of this episode we hadn't been there yet but we had our first market. It was absolutely amazing. Uh, it was actually raining, and it's still raining right now. We've had a lot of rain lately, but we need it, so very happy about that. But we had a great time. We met a lot of awesome people. We're happy to be out in community and to learn from other farmers and just from the whole entire experience in general. So we're really looking forward to the next market, which is in two days and I'm out here harvesting some Royal Burgundy bush beans. You guys saw us plant those with our Earthway Cedar. They did excellent. They're really pretty and I'm excited to show you. So as you guys can see, their beautiful purple color so unfortunately these do not stay purple when you cook them it's because of a gas that's in the skin of the bean it starts with an a the name is escaping me right now but they do turn green they are delicious raw though i don't know if you eat raw beans off the off the plant from the garden we do we love them so we might toss them in a salad for an extra pop of color um, and we're definitely going to be selling these at the market too i've actually already harvested some of these and we're excited to bring them there because they are so pretty and so delicious all right so we get a decent amount a lot of them are so close to being ready but not quite i did want to show you guys the rest of the tunnel so this is where all of the green beans were growing and they come over here as well broccoli I do have some more bug damage on my kale so I did spray some more neem I harvested the, this uh, green curly kale for the market, so it's just starting to grow back. More kale, I gotta harvest some chard for the market as well. All of the beets are coming in really good. I'm so excited about this. Let's see if I can get you guys in here. Let's see. Get some growing. Then we have our Brussels sprouts. Carrots are still doing really well. But what's doing the best, if you ask me, are our tomatoes. These are Romas. They get even bigger as we go in. As you can see, the beefsteak variety here. It's a little early for tomatoes in Maine, especially since we've had funky weather. Um, you know, we've had the really, really hot days, then it gets down right into the low 50s at night and, you know, doesn't exceed 65 during the day with these this rainy and cold. But the tunnel has definitely helped with that. These will all be red soon and I will be destined for the kitchen to make all the sauces and salsas. <laughs> all right guys, so we are gonna spend the rest of our weekend harvesting and getting ready for the market. Kevin actually built a wash pack station that we clean our vegetables with that's currently in our outdoor kitchen slash processing area. So we're really excited to show you guys that. We hope you have a wonderful Friday and we'll see you on the next one.
want to see more, smash that subscribe button with double fists. And also, if you like our videos, absolutely obliterate that like button. Oh, yeah. What do you think, Jade?